Welcome to the programme. Thai soldiers have been fighting red shirt protesters for a third day in the centre of Bangkok and there's no sign of a let up in the violence or the military backing down. Soldiers say they're bringing in reinforcements and they've also set up a live firing zone in one district. There have also been reports of a medical rescue worker being shot as the pr protests to bring the government down continue. Well, joining me on the phone now from Bangkok is our correspondent Tony Bertley. Uh, Tony, just give us a sense of the numbers of military personnel that you're seeing at the moment. Well, so I, I'm in one of that in that life uh, no uh, life fire zone, and uh, there's been a build up, steady build up throughout this evening of troops and armed police. Some of them carrying kind of weapons with uh, normal bullets, and some carrying bullets. Um, you know, the armoured. Uh, the rubber coated uh, um, rubber bullets and, and they're, they're building up slowly but there's not the numbers here that you would expect to make some kind of last assault on the red shirts um, camp which is just down the road about 150 meters from where I'm standing um, so there is a lot of tension here now every street corner is manned by soldiers and armed police every shop doorway has a policeman or a, or a soldier in it but they're being faced by a hard core of red shirts there I've seen them carrying spears baseball bats uh, wooden clubs there's a steely determination from a number of the red shirts that they're going to stay here no matter what. And they are expecting some kind of assault, but it doesn't seem at this moment if the, the, the heavy uh, armour that's needed, like the tanks, for, for, for example, are about to roll in. Uh, where do you think most of the troops are being deployed? Because, as you say, there is a cordon around the area where the red shirts are congregating as such. They're, they're all around. Wherever you go here, there's now barbed wire strewn across the streets. Um, you can't pass through certain areas. It seems like there's a kind of a stranglehold now on the red shirts, and they're squeezing ever tighter. I think they're trying to stop the supplies coming in. They're hoping that more people actually fade away, and then it will weaken the, the, the stand of the uh, red shirts. But actually going through the red shirts camp, it, it seems like you know there's more people there this evening than before. So maybe some of them are answering the call. Maybe some of them are believing that there's not going to be an assault because you know the fear for the last 48 hours has been that this final assault would come and come very soon and it could be very bloody. You know, we've heard now there's 22 casualties, 22 people killed, more than 160 people wounded. Um, these people are preparing for a fight. It's going to happen. But, you know, there's got to be a conclusion. You know, logic tells you it's got to end somehow. Now, perhaps behind the scenes, and we're not hearing this, there are, you know, there's a dialogue going on and maybe there's going to be some last minute reprieve. But at the moment, it seems like the military build up, the police build up, suggests that within the next 48 hours, something will give. Uh, well, for the moment, Tony Berkeley, thanks for bringing us up to date there from the live firing zone as such. Well, to Ella Callan now, who's also in the Thai capital. Uh, Ella, uh, we've, you've been watching what's been going on uh, throughout the day, certainly, and uh, the death toll increases. That's right. Uh, as Tony was just reporting, there has been a build-up of red shirt protesters here inside the protest zone where I am. Certainly those I spoke to earlier in the day were indicating that they didn't want to leave. Uh, the vast majority of them believing that they want to stay here and push the government uh, towards dissolving the parliament. That's still their claim uh, as it has been for the past few months that the red shirt protesters have been camped out in this key area of Bangkok. Uh, some protesters also told me that they now believe it's too late for them to leave considering the military has encircled their camp uh, they now believe that they're in greater danger if they in fact leave but what's clear is that red shirt protesters on the outside of the military control zone uh, are now also mobilizing we're getting some early indications that perhaps uh, some groups of red shirts are gathering in other areas of Bangkok certainly the pure Thai party headquarters is one of those areas that is uh, the political party, uh, the political arm of the red shirts, if you like. Uh, certainly we're hearing about a thousand red shirts have been gathered there and are going to try and make their way into the protest site. Uh, the road that they would come down on is now completely blocked. I was there earlier in the day and razor wire completely surrounding that area. They won't be able to walk through. But we're also hearing that in the Khlong Toi area of Bangkok, which is the slum, perhaps some red shirts are gathering support mm. there. We know that the red shirts mostly gain their support from the rural poor, uh, but also there's a lot of urban poor who, who are supported by or who support the red shirts cause uh, and who uh, want this government out because they believe they largely represent the Bangkok elite.
Uh, Ella, if you do have uh, groups of people now gathering in certain areas of the capital, you mentioned uh, Klong Toy, which we think is about five kilometres to the east of the live firing zone that's been cordoned off. Does this also then typify the mixed messages that the red shirt leaders are giving to their people? Yes, on, on Friday we were hearing some wanted to try and give up, some wanted to negotiate, some wanted to carry on fighting. Certainly it's been many days now since the Red Shirts spoke with one unified voice. Uh, there have been some leaders uh, saying that they want to reopen negotiations with the government. Uh, certainly some others are giving no indication that that's the route they're heading down. The government uh, is not saying that it is now talking to protesters uh, or, or the leadership of the Red Shirts. Uh, and in fact the more hard line elements have been appealing uh, to Taksin Shinawat, the former Prime Minister who was ousted in a coup and the the man who most of the red shirts largely want back in control. Uh, as for these groups that are gathering uh, around the city, it's hard to tell at this point uh, how big they are and how effective uh, those groups can be. Uh, large parts of the capital are sealed off and roads are blocked. Getting around is very hard uh, and there's all but a military curfew on the north and southern flanks of the protest site. Uh, so certainly if big groups do mobilise on the other side of the soldiers, uh, we could start to see uh, some intense fighting break out once again. Indeed, it's a developing situation. You're keeping an eye on it for us, uh, Ella. Thanks for joining us from Bangkok. Well, just to give you a sense of the small area in the centre of Bangkok where this is all happening, Rajprarop is the area that's just been declared a live firing zone by the military and is one of the main business districts. And Lumpini Park, that's where the clashes took place on Friday and where a suspended military officer was shot in the head. Zena Awad looks at what's been happening so far. A war zone is how a local newspaper in Thailand has described the capital Bangkok on Saturday. The government, making good on its promise to break the back of the red shirt protest, says a number of military options are on the table, including live ammunition. The demonstrators, though, remain in place behind the barricades, vowing to continue their two months protest until their ultimate goal of bringing the government down is achieved. They should stop so the country can get back to normal. Parliament's dissolution is the best solution, and it's easy. Many have paid heavily for this. The situation that we have right now can only lead to civil war, and that's not something we want. Eyewitnesses say explosions are being heard on both sides of the divide. The red shirts are believed to be armed with homemade grenades. But the crackdown is taking its toll on them. Red shirt leaders say they're running out of food, water and other vital supplies. Most embassies have evacuated their staff and their families as the fallout from the crisis continues to loom large. Zaina Awad, Al Jazeera. Peace talks between